What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick. Today I'm going to be walking you through a no fluff maintenance guide for the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. These steps are crucial if you want to keep your machine running smooth and printing clean. I'll break everything down into chapters so you can easily come back and find what you need anytime you need to do your maintenance. And if you've got a full size A1, I've got a dedicated maintenance video for that as well. I'll drop a link down below. All right, let's jump right in. Here's a quick breakdown of each of the steps. First, we're going to clean out the tool head, check the extruder gear, check our filament cutter, and then we're going to move on to our moving parts. We're going to maintenance our X axis rails. We're going to maintenance our Z axis rails and screw. And then we're going to maintenance the Y axis guide. Today's video is sponsored by JLC 3DP, an online 3D printing service that offers industrial grade technologies and materials that go way beyond what most of us can do at home. They've got full color resin, nylon, and even metal printing options like stainless steel and titanium, all at prices that are surprisingly affordable. If you've ever needed a part that's stronger, more heat resistant, or just precise than what your FDM setup can handle, this is the place to go. Turnaround time, most orders ship in about one week. And the process is super simple. Upload your model, pick your material, get your quote, and you're all done. I'll drop a link down below so you can check them out. And a big thanks to JLC3DP for supporting the channel. Before we start the maintenance process, let's make sure that our printer is turned off. First, let's go ahead and remove the extruder cover. When removing the cover, pull from the bottom out, not the top. The top has these little plastic arms that will snap off. And as you can see, I've already broken one off doing prior maintenance and hot end changes. Now what I would like to do is check our filament cutter. And this will also give us more access to the extruder gear. Let's go ahead and remove the hex screw on the right hand side. While unscrewing it, add some pressure to the cutter arm just slightly so that you can unscrew it completely. Once that is done, you'll expose your filament cutter. Check and make sure it's not broken or worn down. I only suggest replacing it if it's broken or dull. Next, use your can of air and blow out any debris in the extruder gear area. This is the gear that feeds the filament into the extruder. There should be some buildup and dust, which is totally normal. Make sure to inspect your gear as well. It's only plastic and will definitely wear down. I have run thousands of hours on mine and this is still going strong. So the gear should only be replaced if you happen to run into issues. I have seen where filament struggles to get pulled through adequately. And I've also seen where it loses its grip and struggles to pull that last bit of filament off of your spools and literally gets stuck. Next, using your fingers, add a little pressure to the extruder fan on the left hand side to keep it from spinning and give it a good hit with your can of air. Once you're done with your inspection of the tool head, make sure you don't see any leftover debris. Now let's go ahead and lift up our cutter blade and slide it right back into place. Lift the cutter arm and replace the hex screw. Again, applying slight pressure to the cutter arm while you screw it back in. Next, I like to check behind the hot end for filament buildup or debris. Start by removing the rubber nozzle boot. If you have a ton of hours on this boot and it looks pretty crusty, I would just recommend replacing it. Next, unlatching the retainer clip, swing it to the right, then the left arm will swing open to the left. Your hot end should now be loose. I like to use two fingers and holding onto the heat sink, give it a pull down and out. Now I like to give this area a quick hit with my canned air. Next, lightly dampen your microfiber cloth with some IPA. Use it to give your hot end heating assembly a nice wipe down. Now you can either replace the same hot end or add a new hot end to the machine. Make sure you face the flat end with the magnet towards the back. Close the left arm and then the right retainer clip. Once it's locked into place, slide on your rubber nozzle boot. Make sure it's sitting level and that your nozzle is sticking out of the bottom. Next slide the front cover back on starting from the top two plastic arms and gently push in from the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and move on and maintenance the A1 Mini's moving parts. The A1 Mini's rail system is designed for long-term stability with minimal need for adjustment. However, to keep it running smoothly and accurately, it's important to clean and lubricate the rails on a regular basis. This helps minimize noise, extends the life of the printer, and protects the rails from rust and premature wear. The A1 Mini has an X, Z, and Y axis rail system. Let's go ahead and start with the X axis arm. First, let's go ahead and move our tool head all the way over to the left. We're going to give our X axis arm a good cleaning. Let's start by using a vacuum to gather as much debris as we can first. You will probably notice small black particles. Those are small belt parts that get released over time and it's completely normal. Once 
Once you complete the vacuum process, it's a good idea to use your canned air and give it a good quick final cleaning. Then with a microfiber towel, give your entire front arm a good wipe down. Once you're done, move the tool head all the way to the right side and finish the rest of the arm. Once the arm is completely free of debris, we're going to reapply some super lube to the top and the bottom of the rail. You can print these super lube applicator caps, which makes the process a little bit easier, and I'll add a link down below. The cap for the top has a small lip on it and will allow you to slide it along the rail. Evenly apply a small amount of lubrication to the entire top side of the arm. If you notice any drips, be sure to wipe them up. Next, using the second printed applicator, apply another even amount of lube to the underarm. Again, be sure to wipe away any excess lubrication you see dripping down the front of the arm. Now take your tool head, slide it back and forth evenly to spread the lubrication across the arm. Once again, if you happen to notice any lubrication dripping, go ahead and wipe it up. Remember, a little goes a long way with this. Next, we need to lubricate the pulley. First, we need to remove the purge wiper. Using the Bamboo Lab Allen, remove the screw from underneath the wiper and it will slide off towards the back. Next, let's remove our end cap using the same Allen. Unscrew that cap and it will pop off. If it's a little tough, just give it a good wiggle back and forth to loosen it. Once the cap is removed, it will expose the pulley completely. You can literally skip the step of removing the wiper and the end cap if you invest a little money and purchase these needle tip precision bottles. It will allow you to apply the lubricant where you need. Since we have the end caps removed, let's go ahead and apply a small amount on the pulley. Try to keep the lube from hitting the belt as much as you can. This is really a tiny amount that's being applied here. Next, slide the tool head back and forth a few times. Let's go ahead and replace the end cap and the screw. Now from the back, slide the wiper back on and replace the screw as well. And we're all done with the x-axis arm. The z-rail process is essentially identical to the x-axis rail process. Using a clean microfiber cloth, Wipe away any debris from the rail. Then using your first applicator cap, apply a thin layer of lubricant along the left side of the rail. Once that's complete, switch to the right side of the rail and apply another thin layer of lubricant to that side. After both sides are lubricated, wipe away any excess drips from the front of the rail and any lubricant buildup at the bottom. Next, there's a small oil filling hole. Add one to two small drops into that hole and wipe away any excess lubricant. Now it's time to turn on our machine. Once it's completely booted up, we're going to move the Z-axis up and down a few times. Go into the control options, then the XYZ tab. Next, move the arm up and down a few times to make sure the lubrication is spread evenly across the rail. Next, let's go ahead and maintenance the Y-axis guide rail. You should be very familiar with this process as a printer will warn you when it needs to be lubricated. Using the control panel again, Move the x-axis arm all the way up so it's out of the way. Once that is done, turn off the machine to unlock the bed. I like to start from the front first. Push the bed all the way back. Next, using my canned air, remove any debris that might be stuck around the guide rail. Now using a clean area on your microfiber cloth, give the y-axis guide a good wipe down. Be sure to move the bed back and forth to clean the entire rail. Next, we're going to use a super lube to evenly apply a small amount of lubrication along the guide rail for both sides. I have recently been experimenting with my precision bottles for this step and I like the results. With a very light squeeze to the bottle, apply a thin amount of super lube to the top corner of the rail, all the way down. Now do the same for the other side rail. If the process doesn't give you the results that you like, you can always use a super lube applicator cap that comes with that set. I feel that the applicator cap can sometimes release too much lube, so using the precision bottles has given me much more control. Once the lube has been applied on both sides, move the bed back and forth a few times. We are now ready to move on to the next step. The Z-screw on the A1 Mini is a bit difficult to clean because of its design, but I have a tip on how we can get a proper cleaning from our Z-screw. This step should be completed every three months. You can go a little bit longer if you're not printing thousands of hours on your machine though. What we need to do first is give the Z-screw a quick wipe down. Using a microfiber cloth, hold it against the Z-screw. Then we're going to use the control panel to move the X-axis arm. As the arm comes down, slowly move your cloth up the Z-screw. 
Now be very careful not to let the cloth get stuck into the arm. That would just be a mess. <laughs> Now by tapping the Z-screw down arrow on the control panel, slowly get as much dirty grease as you can. If your Z-screw is pretty dirty, I would definitely consider doing a full wipe down a few times. Once you're happy with the cleaning of your Z-screw, it's time to apply some grease. First, let's make sure the X-axis arm is all the way up. Then using my recommended Lucas Oil White Lithium Grease, I use what I like to call a tap method. For the Mini, I use this cap extension that makes reaching the screw a lot easier. Lightly tap a small amount of grease every half inch up the screw. Once the grease has been applied, lower the arm all the way down and back up to evenly spread the grease along the screw. Now one thing I would like to mention in this video is belt tension. The A1 Mini can check the belt tension automatically through the vibration frequency calibration. If the belt is loose, the HMS system will notify you to use the auto belt tensioner, and it will also guide you on setting the right tension. I personally have never run into any issues with my A1 or my A1 Mini belts though. Once all the maintenance is complete, the last thing I like to do is run a calibration on our machine. This can potentially weed out any issues that you may experience with prints after your maintenance. Alright, that's going to conclude our maintenance for our A1 Mini. I hope that I made this tutorial as easy to follow as possible. If you're new to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I spend a ton of time making the highest quality videos that I can so you can get the most out of them. Again, my name is Nick. Have a great day and as always, happy printing.